We're here in Iceland in a basalt lava field with basalt columns behind us and snow on the ground. Now, 66 million years ago, a cataclysmic meteorite would hit the Earth, causing a devastating effect on all life on the planet. Throwing a cloud of dust into the sky, it would block out the sun for up to one year, causing photosynthesis to come to an end, meaning there were no plants, no food for dinosaurs to eat. 70% of all life on the planet would cease to exist. But in the center of Africa, something magical was happening. You see, the world was getting colder. Ice was forming on the poles and was spreading across the earth. But in the center of Africa, in a small pocket near Ethiopia, things were not changing at all. It was actually staying warm and an evolutionary miracle was happening. Was the meteor had struck and clouds were in the sky and dinosaurs had perished. But the mammals that could burrow in the ground and forage for nuts and berries were hibernating and waiting. And when the clouds cleared, they appeared to find they had the whole planet to themselves and they were able to evolve very, very quickly indeed. And that is why the story of humans comes in. Let's go and find out more about it. Now, when the skies have cleared and the mammals crawled from their burrows, ready to evolve, they had 60 million years to change the way that they were going to live on planet Earth. And eventually, they would evolve into Homo sapiens and then human beings. They would even evolve to be able to use rocks, like this piece of basalt, as tools. Tools very much like the tools you use in your household today. Let's head to the top of this waterfall and find exactly how that story played out. And after a long walk, of this glacial valley, I finally found Marcos, who's going to help us with this huge question around human evolution. Now, Marcos, before we begin, there's a waterfall here. It's fed by one of the largest glaciers in Iceland. I understand around this time, six million years ago, the world was getting very cold. It was starting to become slowly but progressively colder until finally we reached the last glacial age, and that was only 2.5 million years ago. Ah, so let's go back to the beginning. So the asteroid strikes. We have this huge ash cloud in the sky. Photosynthesis ceases to exist almost, and therefore there's a breakdown in the food chain. Dinosaurs are wiped out. Does anything else survive? Yes, indeed. This was one of the challenges that life faced throughout our past history. This wasn't the only massive extinction, but it was one that was very important. After the dinosaurs went extinct, some creatures, the smaller creatures on land, were able to survive. Some of them are ancestors. Why? They were borrowing, they were sheltered from this massive explosion that happened back then, and they were able to make it. Right, so the cloud that was in the sky was there for around 4 to 12 months, scientists predict. So the, they emerge from their burrows, these mammals. They come out and they have the whole world to themselves. What happens then? Exactly right. So again, when life finds this empty niches, they colonize, they spread, and they evolve very rapidly. And this is what happened to mammals. They radiated across our planet, both on land and the oceans. After the dinosaurs went extinct, the Earth was still very warm and our ancestors, old monkeys, they were living on forests because Earth as a whole was still very warm. Wow, it was covered in forests. Apes and monkeys were foraging and living in the trees. Now, in Central Africa, something really interesting was happening because the world started to cool down. What happened in Central Africa? Yeah, so moving forward, and this is getting closer to our current times, this forest started to become grasslands. Right. and savannas okay. and places where now our ancestors, these ancestors that were now and before in trees, they had to go on land. Oh. They no longer relied on them climbing and grabbing fruits, but they were now starting to hunt on land and 
be hunted also from predators. And that would change the way that they had to act and the, the whole status of their body. Exactly. What happened to the way that they evolved? Did they start to stand up? Yeah, exactly. So their locomotion now was bipedal. They had, like we have now, stray, straight legs and forward-facing feet. So their locomotion became like that, and that also freed our hands to do things with them. Ah, and that's not the only thing that happened. So these, uh, these earliest ancestors of ours, these apes, these monkeys, started to have something magical happen started to have language. What happened? Exactly, so progressively, and this is very, very interesting indeed, they started to make shifts and evolve in different ways that were not only biological, like we are accustomed to up until now. Up until now, all of the life forms were evolving, biologically speaking. Their genes were changing, and they were getting these new limbs, these new capacities, these new ways of living. Now it was things that they started to do, like building tools, like manipulating fire, like communicating, like you're saying, and that was the thing that started to change back then. Well, Marcos, there's so many creatures on the Earth that are intelligent. They work in pods, they work in teams, they can even communicate. What made these early humans so special? So really what it comes up to is our Cognitive abilities. Cognitive ability meaning brain power. Meaning brain power. Our brain size is a lot larger than other brain sizes compared to our size. Okay. And this was the thing with our ancestors and it continued throughout our human evolution until we finally reached something anatomically similar to us about 250,000 years ago. And this cognitive ability was what, what led us to be able to communicate, to gather knowledge, to accumulate knowledge and to evolve through time now in a way that we harness the power of the environment, we adapt the environment towards our needs. But this is jumping ahead, but this is very, very important and very distinctive to humans. Wow, that's so amazing. And that brings us to what our children are going to do this week. Now, with the early emergence of these humans, these human civilizations, they were the communication, the use of tools. This week, we want you to find six things that exist today that also existed six million years ago. We've given you two, and we want you to go find another four and investigate how they emerged, why they emerged, and why they're so important for human life. Marcos, it's been brilliant to have you here at this beautiful waterfall. See you next time.